Dave and I have been doing some homework over the last few weeks and we've made a small change to the house. Okay. We've, um, D Dave and I are still working on the numbers but we've put a wine cellar in for you. Really? A real under the ground wine cellar? Underneath the pantry in the, um, in the kitchen. Oh, awesome. So we've changed the drawings now. Oh, brilliant. Um, so if we run brilliant. through those with you, so we've got a little floor plan and we've got a cross section. So, okay, marked, yes. <laughs> so it's, not, it's not the world's biggest wine cellar, but I'm sure we can uh, stock it with a few hundred bottles, that's for sure. So it's, it's, it's directly under the pantry. Now the reason for that, it makes structurally, it, it makes us um, the easiest way to get it in there without having to put massive foundations in under a different part of the house. Mm -hmm. um, like I say, Dave and I haven't finalised the pricing on it, but we wanted to get a general okay from you if you could give us a hand with maybe an aspect of the build to offset some of the hours that it'll take to put that in. So maybe we get you um, doing some work on the plywood or some tanking or some, I don't know, we haven't even discussed it yet. No, yeah. Dave and I had a bit of a chat after, you know, some of our earlier footage that Sue and Martius were really, um, were really, I wouldn't say upset, they were, they were, they were um, we hadn't ticked all their boxes. We we heard that they, the wine cellar was a big thing for them, and you know Dave and I are going out on a limb. We've got to make the numbers work, but ultimately we thought, well, if we're going to build it, let's make the wine cellar work if we can. And um, by Sue and Marty's putting some hours in, I, I think it should pan out. So that was our surprise. Wow, that's hope you're happy great, with it. That's a very great surprise. That's a Thank really you. great surprise. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. The, um, the, the, the section is zoned rural, so it's not actually hooked up to the count town supply. And a lot of people probably don't know, but the council will provide a, a sewage system running past your gate. You're actually obliged to hook into that because they've spent the investment running it past the gate. But because this is rural, we've, um, we've got no option but to put a septic tank in. What that should mean is that their rates should be less because they're obviously not using the town supply. And um, the council have got some really strict um, laws and bylaws regarding the, the disposal of the effluent. You just can't pump raw sewage, obviously, into the fields. So the system we've put in is a is a very eco product. It's a, it's got various chambers and and basically as the water from the showers and the toilets and the kitchen sink, all those things go into the septic. That water has to be purified before it's pumped into the into the irrigation lines. Those irrigation lines are going to feed the trees. Um, you can't spray it on vegetables because you don't want that water on the vegetables. But ultimately it can water all the fruit trees, it can water the shelter belts. And that system has to be maintained and comply with the council bylaws. Um, I think the fact this one um, is generating, you know, like it's generating its own um, power through the solar is certainly new. But the, um, but the new modern septic tanks, most of them have that sort of spreading system where they, where they um, uh, lay the pipes out in the ground and it just disperses into the into the ground. So this one is quite unique where you don't actually need any electricity, it's self-supporting. We've laid drip lines through my wee plants and hopefully that will, the, uh, will be fed, will be pumped through from the septic tank. The lines are placed approximately a metre apart. I'm trying to wind them through the uh, trees so that we can pick up as many trees as we can. Um, and they go for a total of uh, 300 metres uh, along our boundary line and then a bit around the corner as well. This one's particularly good because uh, it's a solar powered one so it's completely um, separate, doesn't require any extra power, it has its own uh, solar panels and it has a, a controller that works out what's going on, how much power it's got to use and does um, it does what it needs to do with the sewage. It uh, has basically it's got two chambers, um, which is your standard septic tank, and then it goes into an aeration chamber, and then it goes into a settlement chamber, and then it goes through some filters, and and then it, by that stage it's clear clear water, and it goes out to the shelter belt um, to irrigate the trees. So we've installed an aero green sewage system to the property. And that allows us to pump the treated effluent onto the shelter belt trees around the perimeter of the property. The batteries are solely to drive the septic tank system. The, the battery power is used to drive the pump. Now inside the, inside the septic tank system there's 
a pumping system that will irrigate the clean water out into the irrigation drip line. So it'll feed the fruit trees and the native uh, shelter belts. At the moment they're still working on the batteries but effectively we've got a control panel here with a pump set up in it and the batteries are completely separate from the main house. So if anything goes wrong with the main house the septic system will still work. So what that means in, in real terms is that the, the sewage system is running a pump, it's been run by a pump that is run by its separate solar panels on the roof completely independent of the house and therefore that means the the solar system on the house can be of a smaller nature because we're generating electricity on a different system completely separate from the house. If there's a problem with the main house the sewage system continues to run independently of the house. We've got a, um, a standard Hunza water pump now that's pumping the, the, uh, the, the water out of the water tanks directly uh, behind the shed here and it's coming through a piping system which goes through a UV filter. Now the UV filter's got UV light pumping through it to kill all the bacteria in the water. Of course we want to make sure the water going into the house is drinkable and palatable so it goes through a three chambered system and it flows through the, through the, uh, the system every time someone turns a tap on inside. This pump is completely separate from the house so we haven't got this sort of humming sound coming from the, uh, from the pump. It'll run through these three chambers and the black pipe at the background there will send the water into the house to the showers, the toilets, obviously the kitchen sinks, etc. Yeah, we've been on site now for four weeks uh, doing all the preparation for the panels, which is uh, today's big day, obviously. Let's we'll see what's going on behind us. Uh, Scotty, my foreman, has been here most of the time setting out the job, um, obviously liaising with the digger drivers, everything for the wine cellar. Um, that's been a big job getting that done, with the waterproofing and things around that. The wine cellar, well that's been a hole in the ground. We didn't really know how it was gonna how it was gonna come together, but it requires an awful lot of insulation to uh, keep it watertight and it will be covered up obviously with the uh, with the flooring and have this nice little trapdoor to sneak down into it when it's been completed. Uh, in the four weeks I've been here we have set out, uh, dug out for the wine cellar, laid all the poly blocks in the wine cellar and the steel and the Blocks have been filled, backfilled, uh, trenches for all these panels, and we poured the tidy slabs for the panels to sit on, and today the panels are going up. In this situation, uh, the walls go up first, uh, the tilt panel concrete walls go up first, then we pour our footings, uh, which are about 400 thick, full of reinforcing steel, hold, which holds all the tilt panels up. Uh, then we're going to pour our ground beams around the outside, put the roof on, and once the roof's on, then the floor will be poured. Um, under the cover of the shade because uh, it's a black floor and we've got con some concerns this time of the year pouring black concrete floor uh, with the heat that we have over in Martinborough and the heat we've had this summer so uh, we'll be pouring the floor last which is probably well it is unusual for a house construction. Reed are the company that um, invented the system for the tilt panels uh, which is an insulated tilt panel with the uh, polystyrene sandwich in between um, they've come up with the, uh, the design of these panels, uh, it's called Nirvana System and we contracted a company called uh, Latty's Civil in the Hawke's Bay. They have um, uh, made the panels, trucked them down and it's their job to uh, uh, stand them all up and get them all nice and plumb and straight and correct for us. The, um, the Nirvana panels that we're using, the unique thing about them is that the polystyrene is in the, um, is in the panels themselves. So that adds the insulation values to the, to the building. So there's, there's no need to strap and line the building. It's purely relying on the concrete and the polystyrene to insulate and keep the property warm. Okay, so the layers, the layers of concrete in here is a 50 mil front, uh, front face layer. We've got the polystyrene insulation in the middle, and then we've got the structural layer. It's full of steel, and uh, that's pr pretty much what gives it its strength. Add it all together, these are precast insulated Nirvana panels, all ready to uh, have someone live in it. Well, over the last few weeks, not an awful lot seems to have been happening. It was, it was a bit like, are they actually going to be building? Um, Martius was certainly a bit concerned that there seemed to be nothing there.